Hello, I'm Phil, and this is the pre-lab instructional video for the Rolling Without Slipping Lab. In this lab, we will be experimenting with the moment of inertia of several objects, like this uh, disc, this metal hoop, and a sphere, this little pool ball. <clears throat> so what we are going to do is roll these things down a ramp and measure their motion to see how they roll. Uh, <clears throat> the things we'll be using are this ramp, uh, and we'll be using this uh, computerized motion sensor to do all the uh, dirty work for us. So the first thing we need to do is we need to measure the angle of this ramp so that we know how this thing is going to be moving. So what you'll do is you get a meter stick, which is one meter long obviously, you'll put it on this ramp, and now you know that this distance is one meter, and you can measure the height to this point, the height to this point, and do some trigonometry to get the angle. Or if you're lucky and it's an uh, open ramp like this on the bottom, you can just call the base your initial height zero and just lay the meter stick down like this and get your height like that. Okay. So the way it actually works is that you're going to set whatever object you're using at the moment about 20 centimeters or so in front of this uh, device before you start it rolling. If it's too close, it will mess things up. So you're just going to set this, item, uh, set this object here and let it start rolling and I'll show you in a minute how to use the computer software to start everything going. So when you uh, have your instrument starting to read, you can let it go, let it roll, and then hit stop on the computer when it hits down there. Now, we want this box down here uh, with this blanket on here to keep the objects from rolling off and doing damage, and also this blanket will help uh, keep reflections down to a minimum to, uh, so your data won't be skewed. So before we get started with the computer, there are a couple other things I'll talk about here. Uh, first is you want to adjust the angle of the sensor here. There's a little knob that lets you adjust where it's pointing up or down. So what you want to do to angle it the correct way is you want to take your meter stick and put this directly flush with the sensor so it looks kind of like a normal vector coming out. And you want this normal vector to be exactly parallel to your table, to your ramp. Okay, so when you get it just right, then you know it's, uh, it's in position. Okay. One other consideration is that these objects are different heights, so you'll need to adjust the position of this uh, uh, motion sensor depending on which object you have. So for example, for the taller object, you can just move this up here, but okay, not that high, probably somewhere around here, so that it's pointing at the center of the object that's rolling down the ramp. For the pool ball, for the smaller things, you'll need to move it down like this. Now, for one other piece, if you are using the wheel on an axle, that is this, uh, this wheel here with a smaller axle on the inside, the setup is like this. You have these two foam blocks, you set your meter stick between them, and you adjust your motion sensor. Then you'll just set this on the meter stick and let it roll down like so. Now, one final thing before we move on to the computer is we need to make sure that the sensor is on wide beam. There's a little switch on top here which has a picture of either wide beam or narrow beam, so just make sure it's on the wide beam. Okay, let's take a look at the computer. Now that we're at the computer, first thing you need to do is open up the software package, which is called Data Studio, and here it's this little icon. You should get a startup screen like this, and the first option it gives you is to select what you want to do. And what we want to do is we want to create an experiment. So now it's looking for this device down here. It says it's found it. If it says that it has not found the device, what you will need to do is to make sure on your device here that the power button is turned on. A lot of people forget that. Okay, so now when you have this thing all turned on and ready to go, it will give you a selection of a lot of different activities and experiments you can do. So what we want to do is we want to move down and we want to go to motion sensor, this guy right here. Okay, so you'll double click on that and it will tell you on the screen how you need to plug in the uh, plugs to make your thing work. As I showed you before, the yellow plugs and the black plug were already uh, set up the right way, but it will tell you which one goes where on this little diagram. So next what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything is working with your motion sensor. So you double click on the little motion sensor that was down there and it'll bring up 
this box here where you can do calibrations and things. So go to the motion sensor tab over on the far right here. And when you click on this, you should start to hear the motion sensor start clicking, which means it's uh, taking its calibration uh, measurements. So uh, if you really want to, you can uh, calibrate using this calibration distance thing here, uh, where you can uh, put your meter stick one meter away, or you can put an object one meter away exactly from the motion sensor and calibrate it like that. It's probably uh, doing fine in that respect, though. Uh, one good check to make sure everything is working is to use this current distance box here. Right now it's showing some numbers, so uh, just look here and I will move my hand in front of the sensor and you should see it changing. Now it's at 0.18 meters, now my hand is at uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 meters. So that's a good uh, indication that everything is working fine. <coughs> okay, from here the one last thing we need to do on this screen is we need to change the trigger rate. So you select from this box down here a rate of uh, whatever your lab instructor tells you. Here we're going to use uh, 50 hertz rate, that's 50 counts per second. And when that is all finished, you can click OK. <clears throat> so now we're ready to start the actual experiment. So what we will do is now that this is already selected, there is an option up here in the top corner to start. So I'll just do a example run first. What you'll do is you'll hit start, and after you hit start, the person with the object will let the object roll down the ramp and when the object hits the box at the bottom, you just hit stop. Okay, now uh, this motion sensor should be measuring position, uh, velocity, and acceleration all at the same time, so you don't uh, need to worry about doing any tedious math. Now, the way that we will actually get the data is down here on this little bottom left corner, there is an a option to select a graph or a table. We're going to be using both graphs and tables in this lab. So I will actually just get one uh, full set of data. So while you're watching the computer screen here, I will just start another run and actually move this thing down. So I'm going to hit start, then let go of the object and let it roll down. Here we go. So now that that's finished, we can check to see if our run was okay. So what you do is again, you'll hit graph, you can double click on that, and it'll show all the runs of data that you've taken so far. So now you can select which you want, either position, velocity, or acceleration, and either the first run or the second run. Well, our first run was just garbage, so we can ignore that for now. So I'm going to click on the position measurement of the second run, and this looks pretty decent. For the position, you want to see the motion look like a parabolic curve like this. Now, you can uh, sometimes see a lot of these spurious data points, which we can get rid of. And the way that you do that is you just highlight the ones that uh, you know are bad, and you can hit, just hit delete on your keyboard. It'll ask you if you want to make an editable copy. So just click OK. And you can go ahead and take any data points like this one up here, which are way, uh, way wrong. So don't don't be too aggressive in the data points that you're deleting. Just only take away the stuff that really needs to go. Okay, the reason we're editing this and making it look pretty is because we want to now fit a line to this. And because uh, Excel, uh, position, uh, the points should be going in a parabolic curve, we're going to go to the fit option up here to fit a quadratic line. So select quadratic, quadratic fit and it already put it in here. It might be kind of hard to see, but it put in a, a line the same color as all our data points. And now this box right here will show us uh, the various fit parameters, uh, which are talked about in your lab manual. So now that you have this data, you can either save this or print it to a hard copy, uh, depending on what your lab instructor wants, and we can move on. So there are two ways that we're going to talk about the uh, uh, motion of this object rolling down the ramp. Um, we can either do a torque and acceleration method or we can do the conservation of energy method. Uh, this way with using the position uh, is for the torque and acceleration method. Now for the next part, we want to actually look at a table of values for um, velocity and position. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down again to this little menu here and click on table. And first, we want to look at the velocity data. So 
we want to do, again, run two was the, the data that where we actually ran our first object down. And now it'll give us a table of the time values and velocity values. So first you want to find some kind of uh, time right around where the velocity starts. So you should see a whole bunch of values that are zero and then where they start to climb up. So find one right at the beginning of where it starts to climb up and mark down that time, okay? Then go way down to the bottom and take a look at uh, where your velocity uh, was the maximum value that we, uh, from this graph over here, um, and find the time there. So you have the time it takes to go from zero velocity to maximum velocity on that graph. When you have that, uh, you can close out of that and it'll ask you if you want to completely remove this display, you can just hit OK. That just means get it away from this screen, not completely erase it. So next we want to go back to the table and go to the position uh, values for uh, that run that we did. And then using that t the, time, uh, the times that we recorded from the velocity data, we can go and find the actual uh, positions uh, corresponding to those times. So what you'll do is uh, go back to those times, mark down those positions, and now you have the change in distance it took to get to maximum velocity. And from that, you can calculate the k factor that's written in, in your manual. 